What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is NCIS Season 14, Episode 6, Shell Game. So, after the past couple episodes, I've been a little bit disappointed with NCIS. I really think that they've dropped the quality of some of their episodes, and frankly, as an NCIS fan, I find that even the most average episodes for most people that just go to watch TV, I actually really enjoy because I'm an NCIS fan. I like the humor of the show, I like the crimes in the show. So for me, this episode is a return to form because the case itself, while not extremely interesting, you know, like a girl being held by some crazy psychopath, she escapes her captivity looking for her husband can't find him so it looks like maybe he's the killer or the one that had her kidnapped and then they finally find him murdered and so now it's like so who killed him and then it's kind of you know an interesting little twist between oh it looks like this guy's actually the bad guy but then in the end it turns out no actually this guy who was feeding them information is the bad guy so I've seen it done before it was pretty cleverly done but nothing I couldn't really figure out like as soon as the the little weaselly guy that ends up being the killer as soon as he gave them the documentation I was like you know what I bet it's him I, it seems like something the show would do it seems like the twist the show would throw in there I bet it's him so sure enough when they're like somebody's playing us I'm like yep it's him um of course they tried to make it look like oh maybe the wife is the one I'm like no because <laughs> that was last week last week they had it look like oh this person got kidnapped but it turns out they really didn't and on top of that why would she, the, the scene that we saw at the beginning made it look like there's no way she faked her own kidnapping. Like, that would just be too intense. But anyway, so the case itself was a lot more interesting than last week. Um, it, not necessarily one of the better cases of NCIS, but something, like I said, it's a return to form. Like, the type of case I expect to see. Not extremely straightforward but not a case that is like so like difficult to figure out. There's no way you'll ever figure it out or understand it when they finally reveal. And then the stuff in the personal life, back to being good again. You know, you see Torres is the only one not wearing his thing that Abby made him. And it's kind of like, at first it seems like, oh, this is just going to be the joke that they have. And by the end of it, he'll be wearing it. But they actually kind of make it involved in some character building because it's not easy for him. What he's having to go through now, what the change that he's having to go through from being a lone wolf to being part of a team, it's not easy on him. And this is part of that. You know, it's not just, oh, he's not going to wear the sweater because he doesn't like it. No, it's, it's difficult for him to really know and to understand why wearing that sweater is actually important. And so sure enough, that's it's what he has to figure out by the end of the episode. He has to realize, okay, this sweater is not... It's not the sweater that matters. It's not wearing it that matters. It's what it means to Abby. You don't have to wear it all the time, but to wear it around her just kind of shows her that you care. It shows her that you actually do care about the fact that she cares about you. It's. I like how they handled it. The little talk that he and Gibbs had at the end, I thought really captured the moment and really captured the the emotions of the scene. So, yeah, I thought it was a nice little story they had thrown in there. Um, a couple of the other things that they have, some of them get to me, some of them do not. Uh, they have this guy that showed up at the end of, or at the beginning of the last episode, and apparently Quinn trained him in the academy, and they kind of had a thing. So that was talked about in the last episode. I didn't say anything about it because I was like, was that just a throwaway joke? Like, that didn't mean anything. And then he pops up again in this one for literally the same amount of time. Like, probably just a couple minutes at the crime scene for them to have a little conversation and for her to say, look, we had a little thing. It was nice, but he's like, no, I get it. I, t I can take a hint. He's like, no hard feelings, though. So I just don't know what this means. <laughs> what is the... Are they just trying, are they trying to set up something, or is this just an awkward moment for her? I don't know what they're trying to do. It's, it's really bizarre to me. It, I hate to say it, but this is probably, if this is setting up something, like they have set up some stuff in the past that was brilliant. I mean, Jimmy dating that one Asian girl that turned out to be a mole inside of NCIS, that was brilliantly set up, because when they started dating, it was like, oh yeah, go Jimmy. And so by the end, whenever we find out that somebody 
somebody is guilty of being a mole and she's one of the suspects and we're just like oh it can't be her she's dating jimmy and they think they found the mole and then it turns out she actually is that was a brilliant setup the way they handled it the way that they sort of integrated her into ncis it made sense if this is they're trying to set something like that up where this guy will be important later they've not done it very effectively it's just kind of like he gets thrown in there like oh yeah we she trained me at the academy and we had a thing that's all you need to know <laughs> no i need to know more than that what are you talking about it's it's not very well set up i don't know where they're going with it um but then also going on this one you've got mcgee dealing with the the whole email thing it's not really interesting it's not anything like oh that's hysterical but it's kind of funny at the same time you know it's it, it's not one of the best jokes they've had but I like whenever McGee kind of he he has to struggle with something he throws a little tantrum at his computer I don't know it's it's kind of funny to watch him deal with stuff like that deal with technology going against him because he's kind of the technology person so I don't know I thought it was a funny little joke they had thrown in there but overall I mean it was a much better episode I really thought it would have been interesting if they had the the big politician guy if uh, I think Weiss was his name if they had had him end up being the bad guy and maybe they couldn't get to him because he's in Serbia and he actually did make it over there in time I don't know I thought that would have been a lot more interesting to see them actually fail because they weren't able to figure it out in time um, and possibly have to wait until later to take him down at a, a different time so I don't know that would have been a slightly more interesting conclusion but the way it ends you know we have a nice little moment with the the wife that was kidnapped and you know how she got to see her husband's last the last thing he did was to blow the whistle on his company it's something he would do and it's it's the typical NCIS end so not going to complain too much about it it was another good NCIS episode so I always enjoy those but let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below what did you like and dislike about this episode do you think this is a return to form all that good stuff we can talk about and discuss it Leave a like and subscribe for future NCIS reviews, and I'll see you at the next one. Peace out.